Hello YouTube, welcome back to part 4 of this grass shader tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to conclude the series by adding the final features, which includes the grass movement, the ability to paint the grass, and adding the grass to the depth buffer. Anything further than this, such as the tessellation, can be found on my GitHub page. So without any further ado, let's get right into the episode. The first feature we're going to work on is going to allow us to paint grass onto this mesh. Well, you might be thinking, well, there's already grass all over this mesh. How do we restrict it to a certain area? This can be done by encoding information directly into the mesh. This can be done through vertex colors. Vertex colors aren't visible on the mesh itself, but can provide extra information to our shaders, for example, where we want the grass or where we don't want it. So this can be done in Blender. Let's just open up the .blend file of our plane. And inside, let's switch from object mode to vertex paint mode. In vertex paint mode, you want to select the red color and we can create a mask for where we don't want our grass. I'm going to create this nice little path area that's going to allow, for example, a character to walk through without the grass. Okay, so we're just going to add this and then we're going to save. And we're going to head back into Unity. And you'll notice that nothing has changed, okay? There's no color on the t uh, plane. There's nothing, all right? That's good. Now, let's head into our Grass Pass shader, okay? Let's uh, go into our shaders, open up our Grass Pass, and we're just going to add a simple if condition in our geometry shader that is going to restrict where the grass is drawn. Okay, let's just say if input 0 dot color dot g is lower than 0 0.1 f and input 0 dot color dot red is greater than 0 0.9 f we're going to return and return meaning that it's not going to execute the rest of this code meaning that the grass is not going to be drawn on this current uh, input given input triangle and remember that this color aspect is what we brought in at the very start we have this uh, color color right here so we marked it with the color tag right here and this means the actual vertex color okay now we're gonna save this I'm going to press save and now if you can see we have a nice little path going through now it was just that simple now what if you wanted to edit this inside the unity editor itself instead of having to go back to blender each time well luckily unity has given us the perfect tool for this so if you head over to window package manager and then you see poly polybrush right here if you install this and learn how to do vertex painting on that you can directly paint or remove grass from your planes on here acting just like a terrain okay so this is the first feature the next thing we got to do is actually create the grass movement all right guys so let's head back into the grass path shader to create the grass movement so remember last time we created this rot y matrix that basically takes in our uh, tangent and rotates it along the y axis so if we go back to unity remember rotating along the y is in this direction so it just rotates our grass along the plane itself but now we need to create matrices to rotate our normals along the other two dimensions so if we open up ms paint um we can see what i'm talking about so basically we have our normal here and in order to create our wind movement all we want to do is we want to just rotate this normal around like this and what we can do by rotating the normals basically is keep our grass stuck to the ground but just rotate the tops of the grass so it gives that effect of wind okay so in order to do that we need the other two matrices so let's create that so float three by three again we're going to create rot x and for the rot x we are just going to copy some of the matrices from wikipedia like we did last time so we're just going to get the angle and let's create a return float three by three and we're going to pass in this one zero 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 cause of angle negative sine of angle zero sine of angle 
cos of angle and you don't need to know what this is doing all you need to know is we pass in an angle and it and we multiply the given matrix um, to our existing vector and it will rotate that vector by our given angle that's all you need to know all right now we need the same thing for rot z all right let's go float angle and return I mean, we can just copy this here we go let's just remove that okay we need for rot z we need cause of angle we need negative sine of the angle we need zero and we need sine of the angle we need the cause of the angle zero 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 oh geez zero 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 one all right, that should be it for our matrices. Now we can use this to rotate our grass in any way we want. All right, so now we actually need to create the rotations. So for the rotations, what we're going to do to create a nice smooth movement um, along our grass is use a texture. Now I brought this texture in. Oh, uh, what is that problem? Oh, we forgot a comma here. Let's go back. There we go. All right, we brought in a texture last time in a in probably the first episode, I think. And if we go into our materials, no, not our materials. Here, scenes. We have this water distortion map, and this map it basically has a bunch of colors. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna tile this map, and we're gonna move it sideways or in whatever way across time and then we're going to sample from this map and we're going to sample the different colors and use that to make uh, rotate our uh, grass in different ways okay this is not a technique that i came up with um one of the tutorials by roy stan is the one that came up with this technique and i thought it was awesome they use this for water too it just gives this smooth wind uh movement it actually has that continuous effect of the wind moving through the grass rather than the grass just moving in random directions. Okay, so uh, let's uh, begin implementing that. We actually need to bring in a few variables first. Okay, let's go back into our URP grass shader and let's create a few variables. All right, so we need our wind distortion map. Okay, and this is going to be of type 2D or 2D texture and we're just gonna pass in white as the default and there we go now we also need a wind frequency wind frequency and this is gonna be a vector and we're just gonna pass in 0 0.05 0 0.05 0 0.00 okay now we need a wind strength the strength float we're just gonna pass in zero for now or we can pass in one that's fine all right now we have these we need to remember to bring it in into our grass pass.hlsl file now a 2d can be brought in through the sampler 2d okay wind distortion map and we still have a float 3 wind wind frequency and we have our float of wind strength okay now we have these three we can begin to use them so after our vertex cutoff uh, we can actually implement it so first we need to actually get the UV position that we're gonna sample from so let's create that uh, float to UV equals input 0 dot position OS dot XY times time dot x y times wind frequency all right we're just sampling the uv from our current object position in space and then we're also using time to vary that over time and that will just sample from different points over time and our frequency affects uh affects how fast that happens essentially or how fast we move across the texture okay now we're actually going to get the sample from the texture so we have wind uh, float for sorry for our color our wind sample equals text to d lord and wind distortion map float for and we're gonna pass in our uv 
multiplied by our wind strength. So what's going on here? All we're doing is we're getting a sample from uh, the wind distortion map at a UV position and we're multiplying it by the wind strength to basically affect how much it affects it. Okay, now we also need to create it, uh, the rotated normals. Okay, so we're going to create the rotated normal along the Z axis first, and then we're going to create, uh, we're going to multiply that along the rotated um, X matrix. I'll just show you. All right, here we go. So float three rotated normal Z is equal to the multiplication of our rot Z matrix and our wind sample dot X. Okay, and then we have our input zero dot oh wait sorry it should be i think it should be the opposite way around if i'm wrong please let me know down below in the comments if you know more about these transformation matrices than i do all right z, rod z wind sample dot x and we're just passing wind sample dot x as our angle of rotation into rod z so note how we're actually using the sampled uh color to control our uh, rotation along the z-axis okay now float three and remember our uh, wind frequency scaling uh, sorry our wind strength scaling will ensure that our um, angle is actually within the constraints of what our matrix takes in okay now float three we have a rotated normal and this is our final rotated normal we're just going to take in the rotated normal z and then we're going to multiply that by rot x wind sample y. Now, the, this takes, this rotates it along the z first and then it rotates it along the x. That's all that's happening. It's pretty simple stuff. Now, once we have that, all we need to do to make this work is we just need to replace the o dot normal world space into our rotated normal. And essentially, we're extruding up not along the given normal but along our rotated normal and remember our rotated normal changes along time so if we press play now and we go in and uh, there you go you have a beautiful moving grass i think so yeah now if we go into wind strength you can see that the wind strength really does affect it and we have our wind frequency it just affects how far how quickly it moves along each of the uv axes all right axes <laughs> all right now what's the next thing that we need to do we need to create some random height so one thing you might notice is that all the height here is uniform and it doesn't look so good all right so what we can do is we can um actually just set up a random height generator that uh, varies it between a minimum and maximum height. So let's do that now. Okay, so in order to create the random height effect for the grass, we just need to add first a clamping variable to make sure that uh, there is a minimum height and a maximum height for the grass. All right, so let's go ahead and create those variables. It's just two different floats, which is the min height, and we're gonna call this minimum height, and this should be a float, and we have our max height. Oh, let's just call that max height. This should be a float as well. Now, let's head back into our HLSL shader and let's just create the two variables that we just created, uh, min height and max height. And now it should be really simple to create the random height effect. It should just be one line. Let's just go like float, random height, equals rand and we're gonna get the current position world space and fog factor dot xyz as our seed and we're gonna multiply this by some random float uh, that's a bit too much but yeah and once we have that we are going to multiply the random height with our existing height for our normals when we extrude it up and we are going to clamp this using the clamp function between our minimum min height and our max height and we'll just copy this whole thing instead of writing it out again 
and just paste it there and that's it we should have random height so let's go back and there we go now what we can do is we can increase the decrease the minimum height increase the maximum height and we can also increase the increase and decrease the height itself which will affect the randomness scaling now the next thing that we need to do is we need to create the depth pass for the shader. So the post-processing effects that actually use the depth buffer need to register that the grass actually exists in that buffer so that the post-processing effect actually works correctly. So let's do that now. Okay, so to create the depth pass, let's go back into the URP grass shader and let's create another pass. So let's create this pass just above our geometry pass. Let's correctly indent this and we're going to copy these two. We need the name and the tag and we're just, we're just going to change this to the depth pass. And we're going to change the light mode in to depth only. And these are tags provided by URP itself in order to register it into the depth buffer. So for this we need to ensure that the Z right is on, color mask is zero and cull is off. Now we need to start our HLSL program and we're going to end HLSL, HLSL here. Okay, now I'm just going to copy in a bunch of pragmas and you can pause the video and add this. this is, these are basically pragmas required uh, to tell uh, Unity that this is the depth buffer and give it all the information needed for the depth buffer. So these are the pragmas. You can take this from the GitHub itself, which I'm also going to link down below. We also need to ensure that we have our includes. And we're also going to include, remember, our grasspass.hlsl file uh, because this will render our entire uh, grass geometry again in the same fashion that it does here, in the same rotation, same randomness. It will ro uh, basically render it again here. But the difference is in the depth pass, we don't need the light. Okay, we don't need the color and we don't need the texturing. So we can get rid of all that computationally heavy stuff on this and basically render one pixel saying that there is geometry here. And that's all that the depth pass needs. So note here that the fragment shader is not the name of the fragment shader that we have here, which is just lit pass fragment. That is not what we have here. So it won't actually use the fragment shader from the grass pass at HLSL. So we need to write one more small shader program and we're going to call this half for depth pass fragment to match the name of the fragment shader that we've given here. I'm going to pass in varying's input SV target and we're going to return zero. That's all we need to do. We need to return zero here. And that would tell our depth buffer that there is something here. The indenting is all wonky, I think. We're off by one, but that's fine. It's not really an issue. And once we've done that, we end HLSL and that's it. That should be our depth buffer. Make sure you copy it in all the pragmas and all your settings are correct. When we go back, it has disappeared. Let's just check what is once. Oh, we have put a semicolon in the top of our property. So let's remove that. Let's go back in here and there we go everything is working as expected so we have a minimum height maximum height and once you add post processing to this grass you will notice that the depth buffer actually does register it and it works perfectly all right guys thank you guys for watching the entire grass data series I hope that you guys have learned a lot from this. It was very educational for me as well. And the next episode that I make will probably be my open world game uh, development log series. So I will see you there. I hope you had fun and I'll see you next time.